MMA is a passion, a lifestyle, a religion. If you're an MMA like I am, then your spot for everything MMA is the Las Vegas Fight Shop. Two locations, one at Miracle Mile behind Planet Hollywood and the other at the Fashion Show Mall. Las Vegas Fight Shop carries all the cool MMA brands, Affliction, Tap Out, Silver Star, Skin, Extreme Couture, Bad Boy, and dozens more. It's the Las Vegas Fight Shop. And mention ESPN Radio 1100 or DC and the Sunshine Man, you get 10% off your total purchase. Hey, Kenny, what are you walking around at right now? I mean, I, I still think it's incredible knowing, you know, that you fought sort of at 185 on the reality show years ago. And, you know, you're not a, you're not a short guy. I mean, uh, 145, is, that's quite a feat. I'm right around 118, 119. I really wanted to overdo it, <laughs> make a point. Uh, and I'm in uh, size two jeans right now. Excellent. Uh, yeah. No, I am, uh, I'm right around 161, 162, actually. Wow. So um, right on target. Uh, you know, I've, I've met all my goals, goals throughout. It, it, you know, I've been telling everybody it was a little more difficult because I had to start so much earlier. Coming back from an injury, you know, maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to decide to go down to 45 when I'm at, you know, my heaviest. Um, being on the couch for two months, literally doing nothing, uh, you know, you're going to gain some weight. Kenny, it's Kevin Ioli. Uh, I guess the question, we saw Roy Nelson uh, fight last week. Uh, Roy got a lot of criticism from uh, Dana White, from others in the f- for, for his conditioning, talking about dropping weight. You're kind of on the other end. Are you concerned at all that, you know, you, coming in at this weight, that, it, you know, that you're not going to have that kind of burst that you've had in the past and that it's going to be hard to push, you know, later in the round, later in the fight? Who knows? You know, um, this is my first time at 145, so... I'm prepared for that. Uh, you know, I've had sessions where I've really had to push, and I've experienced, uh, you know, sessions where, you know, I'm uh, when I'm cutting weight, especially this, this last week, uh, I'm not on a, a lot of calories. So uh, I've still uh, demanded a lot from my body and still perform very, very well. So uh, I'm assuming uh, that everything is going to go perfect. I have a lot of trust uh, in my nutritionist, George Lockhart. Uh, he's helped me a tremendous amount. And, uh uh, but, uh, you know, in, in the back of my head, I am ready for that. I, I've experienced that before. I've been in fights where I haven't felt 100% physically. Uh, I've been sick going into one or two fights, and, and uh, I, I've dealt with that, thankfully. Um, so I, I'm ready for that. But, uh, again, I'm assuming that uh, I'll, I'll be at 100%, and um, everything's going well so far. And it should be um, – might, might even be a, a less of a cut than what I've experienced in, in my last couple uh, fights at 55. Kenny, uh, you know, your contributions to the sport have been very large, not only as a fighter, but as a, as a television host, as a, as a commentator on some of the uh, broadcasts uh, when you filled in uh, for Joe Rogan on occasion. So I think, you know, you, you've clearly done a lot. But I think, is it fair to say that you're fighting now with, you know, a lot of pressure on you? Because you, you have gotten some, uh, a couple title shots that other guys haven't gotten. Now you're in a division, you drop down to try to put yourself in contention again. And, mm-hmm. and, that, and now I would think that there's no, you know, no turning back. Uh, it's like do or die now, isn't it? Um, you know, a little bit. You know, uh, you know, some would think that. For me, I, I think I put that on myself, uh, especially in that last fight against Gray Maynard, a little bit too much. Fighting in my hometown, I started saying, this is do or die. This is my last chance. I got to get this done. Here I am. I'm 35 years old now. Uh, turned this month or last month, and uh, I got to do it. But you know, the reality is I, I didn't get into this sport um, you know, because I wanted to be, uh, you know, famous or I wanted to make all this money. I, I dedicated my life to martial arts because I love it. And, you know, uh, I tell you, after this loss and, and coming back from this injury, I, I was so thankful for that. And, and it was so good to be back on the mat. It feels so good knowing that I'm getting back in the octagon and getting to do what I love to do. And I, I've kind of just gone back to that. And that's real more my sentiment, I guess, um, for each fight now is, is, um, being thankful that I'm here in this sport, doing what I love, and um, you know, get, remembering why I got into this. It's Kenny Florian, ESPN analyst, longtime UFC fighter with Kevin and Steve here on the MMA Insiders. You know, it's interesting to hear you as a guy who's been around for a while, and you know, you, you mentioned you're in your mid 30s now. That uh, really, the the mental side of the game never goes away. It it, it always is this uh, morphing process that you're dealing with. It is. It really is. Um, you know, and I think that it goes a lot with, with a lot of sports. But anytime you're talking about this one-on-one uh, type of combat, you know, a lot of it is mental. We all know we need to train all the different disciplines. We all need to do our swimming conditioning. We all need to eat well. Uh, what's going to set us apart, I think, many times is that mental aspect. And 
um, and, and just working hard. And uh, that's one thing I've been doing this this uh, this since I was able to get back on the mat was just working hard. My training load uh, and work capacity for this fight was unlike anything else I've ever uh, done. Um, I've worked harder than ever before, and, and I think people are going to see it physically uh, for me and, and hopefully see it in the fight uh, when I go out there and execute. Kenny, uh, your opponent, uh, Diego Nunes, uh, had a very impressive victory over uh, Mike Thomas Brown his last time out. Kind of an upset victory, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Brown went off the favorite in that bout. Yep. Uh, when you broke down that fight, uh, did, did you give Nunes much of a chance to win there? And, uh, and what do you make of, uh, of the overall performance he had in that fight? Yeah, you know, I thought Mike Brown was going to get the win there. Uh, no, no doubt. I, I thought Nunes, Nunes uh, was going to be a tough fight. I didn't think he would be able to finish Diego Nunez, but I, I thought that, um, you know, certainly Mike would have the big advantage in, in, on experience and, you know, being in the big fights. But uh, Nunez showed that uh, this guy's a grinder as well, man. He finds a way to win. Uh, as You know, with exception of the, the fight against L.C. Davis, um, where I thought he didn't have the best strategy. Uh, he could have won that fight if he fought a different strategy. This is a guy who finds a way to win. He can find himself behind on the cards. He'll come back to win. Um, dangerous striker. You can't keep him on his back. He's like a fish on the mat. You can't keep him uh, down. Uh, you know, he's uh, a tough guy who comes from the same camp as Jose Aldo. He trains alongside those guys over at Novo Niao, who I have a tremendous amount of respect from all the way when I was doing jiu-jitsu over there in Brazil. They're one of the top teams in jiu-jitsu and in MMA now for the long, for a long time in the lower weight classes. So, uh, you know, he's going to be prepared. And uh, I really am expecting this to be one of the toughest fights of my career. Kenny Florian's with us here on ESPN Radio 1100, 98.9 FM, the MMA Insider. So, you know, you guys fight to get title shots. We know that's what drives you. You're down at 145. The eventual goal is to face Jose Aldo. What do you take yep. away from the fight against Hominick? Very competitive fight. Hominick took a beating. Um, yep. Did you know? Did it tell you that hey, boy, Aldo is really, really tough to beat, or did you walk away going, you know what, there are some holes? Um, you know, I knew there were holes before. Every man uh, it can be beaten. Every man has weaknesses in this sport. Still, it's a matter of finding them and, and really, you know, plugging away at those holes. Uh, but uh, you know, I think there's a couple things here. Hominick is an experienced fighter. He's a guy who's fought all over the world. He's a champion in this sport. He's been around at the upper echelon for many years now. Highly skilled guy. Uh, and uh, Aldo still, uh, you know, dominated that fight, with the exception of that last round. Um, you know, he definitely tired. But was that the infection? You know, was it the weight cut? Uh, there's a ton of factors that go into that. So it's hard to really, it's always hard um, anytime you, you, you judge a fighter um, in a fight like that because there's so many things that happen. Um, you know, we, we go into fights injured all the time. We go into fighters into fights with personal problems, with sicknesses, with other things. You're on antibiotics or whatever. You never know what, what's going to happen. It's hard to just judge a fighter on one fight. I try to judge a guy on what he's done throughout his last three or four fights. Mm -hmm. And based on that, Aldo's still one of the best pound for pound, in my opinion. Last one. Kevin and I got into it a little earlier. You tried to double leg me over a conversation on 170. <laughs> he says GSP is way ahead of the field. I think you just need a little time, uh, you know, let the Diaz fight happen. We'll see what comes out of that. But I do think there are guys coming up. Are there guys who can compete well-rounded enough, you know, by the early part of next year? Are we talking, like, two and three years from now? Kevin's on the side that GSP is way ahead. I think the gap is closing. Um, it's closing, but I'm going to have to agree with Kevin that uh, he's still way ahead. Uh, now, you know, perhaps there's a little bit of bias because I train with the guy. But, you know, GSP, unfortunately for everybody else, has logged in way too many hours over everybody. And, you know, what, what's worse is it's just going to get more and more. This guy, he's training right now. He's probably going to train a couple hours from now. He's going to train tomorrow. He's going to train the next day. He just, it, he's nonstop training and getting better. And, you know, people, you know, might have been harder on him about his last fight. GSP was probably hardest on himself. This is a guy who, who's very critical, always wants to get better, and he's doing it right now. And I think that fight against Diaz is going to bring the best out of him because Nick Diaz is an aggressive fighter. Um, I think we should be able to see the, the best out of GSP. Um, and it's going to be a, a great, great fight. Uh, you know, GSP, I think, it just matches up so well against everybody. Uh, one way or another, he's going to get you.